Extinction may stop a behavior, but is it really addressing the underlying causes? Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, and I guide people in growing, learning, and cultivating connection and curiosity. And today, we are going to talk about the fourth issue relating to using full-on extinction. And that issue is it typically doesn't address the root cause of why unsafe, distressed, challenging, etc., behavior is occurring in the first place. I've already mentioned before that oftentimes when people are using extinction procedures, they may get excited because the data points on the graph change, especially from the extinction burst and then dropping down to near zero rates. So oftentimes people will celebrate that as a success and say that their intervention was effective because the data for that particular behavior is showing it's no longer occurring. However, is it really effective if there hasn't been an analysis or exploration of what's really contributing to this unsafe behavior existing in the first place? I know this may sound a little different than what you learned about in grad school, especially if you're a behavior analyst or you're training to become one right now, but function isn't the only thing that matters. We can't just celebrate and say that we have successfully addressed a challenging behavior just because the graph says zero. Sure, for the topography of that particular behavior, maybe we don't see that one anymore. In previous videos, I talked in more detail about the qualitative experience of the person and needing to make sure we attend to that. And I also talked about skills that are likely being suppressed that the person isn't learning during extinction-based procedures. And I've also talked about how sometimes, even though people think that they're targeting a response class, they're really just targeting a specific topography of behavior. Even if you've done a functional assessment or even more detailed, a functional analysis, and you've identified escape, tangibles, attention, multiply maintained, you've synthesized a function, whatever it is that you might be doing, and if you're only addressing the consequences and you're only putting down on paper a replacement, but not, again, actually putting in the work to build a safe learning environment with trust and connection that holistically looks at the wide array of variables that contribute to unsafe behaviors occurring in the first place, you're going to be coming back to needing to address the same issue. So for example, if I have a client who's engaging in unsafe behavior in response to anything they find aversive, but the, the current area, the context currently is giving up items. So a plan is put into place to teach them how to calmly give items and share, how to wait, how to respond safely to no. And all of those things are happening. And for each specific context, or branch, if you will, if you're using PFA and SBT, you start to see changes. They're either using an FCR, they're functionally communicating, or they're just staying calm when those particular contexts are happening. But there's no explicit instruction being done on emotional regulation, on how to regulate the nervous system, on how to just in general keep themselves centered, advocate for themselves when something doesn't feel good for them, and how to navigate environments that don't feel good for them each and every single time that there's a new context that is aversive to them, you're going to see either that topography re resurge or you're going to see an entirely new, likely more intensive topography come into play because of the procedures previously used where they have to keep upping the ante to try to get their needs met and to express whatever it is that they're experiencing. So the main point here is extinction-based procedures highly emphasize uh, that we look at consequences. Most challenging behavior, distressed behavior, unsafe behavior, that is occurring is going to happen regardless of the consequences. If it does change based on extinction being used, 
It's not necessarily changing because the person all of a sudden learned the skills they needed in order to navigate the environment safely. It's that the person from their learning history is experiencing in this specific context that won't work. So when the new context happens, what are they going to do? And how much time are we wasting when we focus on extinction-based procedures instead of building skills, instead of comprehensively assessing and addressing the various skills that we know can create unsafe and challenging behavior in the first place that are being supported in research relating to our fields and our field as well around, again, emotional regulation, self-advocacy, being able to navigate aversive situations in a way that is safe. If this is a conversation that resonates with you, and if you've experienced this before where you've used an extinction procedure and realized you're not actually getting at the root cause, comment root and give me a follow. In our last video in this series, we're going to talk about some of the actual strategies we can use instead of focusing so much on extinction.